I have 15 really cool prints lined up for your workshop, including one that could literally save your tools. And I will make a piece of furniture using some of these prints to prove they work. Or I hope they do. And I also need to fix this. This video is sponsored by Bamboo Lab. Like any good project, this started with a millie. It all starts with the idea of making something and the excitement that you have a bit more experience of woodworking in your backpack than the last time. And that this project will turn out a smudge better than the last one. Or at least that's what I hope for, but I'm not sure it ever happened. So after milling some wood, I used the first one. This is a glue bridge. It's a very basic design, but if you're gluing up panels, it's a great addition to your workshop. Simply clamp your pieces like normal and add these to keep it all in place and flat. Nothing extra, just glue bridges. Setup blocks. This one requires some finesse because as you might know, some filament types have a tendency to shrink. So if you print these, make sure they are the size they should be. If they're not, you can run some of the calibration prints in your slicer to achieve the correct size. But once they are correct, you're good to go. This set even comes with a printed case, so you can buy these usually in aluminium, but this is a true budget option. And this print is actually really good because not only does it come with the printed storage box, it also comes in both metric and imperial and all of the sizes you would need. And they're all labeled, so it's pretty easy using them. Maybe a bit hard getting them out of the box. Oh, come on! So when would you use them then? Well, it's just a matter of getting a repeatable, accurate measurement of your tool. So if you want to cut a rabbit, you can use it as a height measurement. And if you want the distance from the fence to be repeatable, you can do that too. Rulers and tape measures can always have a tiny inaccuracy in them, so this is a good option. Moving on. And talking about 3D printers, if you haven't yet taken the decision to buy one, this entire video could be seen as a persuasion tactic to buy one, <laughs> we'll see. But since I get the question all the time what 3D printer to buy, I'll answer it by explaining my own decision. I have been reducing my fleet of printers down to only a couple of Bamboo Lab printers for a couple of reasons. And yes, they are the sponsor of this video, so you probably shouldn't trust me, but I made the decision long before they sponsored this video. I have used a bunch of FDM printers throughout the years, and from the moment I bought my first Bamboo Lab printer, the P1P, I knew what I wanted. Before that, my kids wanted prints and I printed it for them. But after having tried their app and realizing it was so easy, I bought my kids an A1 Mini for Christmas. And now they print on their own. For me, it simply comes down to when I print, I just want it to work. I'm not the guy doing mods and stuff to my printers. And because of that, I found the Bamboo Lab printers were the best choice for my needs. But hey, let's get back to some more awesome prints. Another print I really like is this height gauge for the saw blade or the router table. Instead of crouching down trying to measure, you can just use this. The same goes for this though, when there's accuracy involved, I would make sure it's actually the correct size. Also, you could buy items like this, but when it comes to 3D printing, you have the advantage of doing more than just one. My favorite is to add magnets to jigs like this, because then they're easy storing on whatever magnetic surfaces you have in your workshop. I have this IKEA cabinet that I can simply use as jig storage. Before I could go on to do more things, I had to turn my attention to some woodworking. And to do that, I made a couple of things with the Shaper Origin. I'm sort of cheating a bit for this project, but I wanted to create a hole in the sides of the top and that meant cutting a half circle with a cove cutting bit. I'm just trying this thing out, so I have no idea if this will be a good looking side table or not. But that's the beauty of sometimes just having a go in the workshop trying out ideas. And this isn't my first try. I did it once before as a three-legged prototype, which looks okay at a first glance, but if you look at it from the side at a certain angle, I think it just looks weird. It's kind of like a mind fu So this time around, I'm trying four legs instead to see what it will look like. It's just fun to play around with ideas. If you for some reason forget to mark the center of a circle, it can be a bit of a pain finding it, but not with a center finder. 
I don't need to say more, it's just easy. I find myself buying more and more flush trim bits for the router. I guess I wear them out, but I also feel like I still haven't found the best one yet. So if you have any tips for a good flush trim bit available in Europe, let me know. I just think you can't have too many flush trim bits. And yeah, I've come to a place in my life where I'm too lazy swapping out bandsaw blades. It's just too much work and I always end up leaving the ripping blade in. It also feels more like a bandsaw than a scroll saw with that blade. And I want it to feel like a bandsaw. For the legs, I had made a template before, so this was actually just a matter of drawing, cutting and then flush trimming. In case you didn't see my router table build, I actually 3D printed a lot of the storage solutions for it. And a bunch of that is just custom to my specific build, so if you have a 3D printer but haven't yet learned CAD modeling, I really can't recommend it enough. It's a really good investment in time. You don't have to get too advanced to just do bits and pieces for your workshop. Okay, one of my favorites. This one might require some explanation and it's not everyone that has a Festool Domino. But if you do or you used it, you know it has a height setting on the side where you set the height of your material. This is just so you get the domino fairly centered if that's what you want. As you can see, it has measurements in millimeters. So what could happen when you don't pay attention is that you say have 19 millimeter thick material so there's no setting for 19 millimeters as you can see. Well then you just go for the closest, 20 in this case. Now if you add the domino from the wrong side, you will end up with a one millimeter gap in your cabinet. And I really love it when I don't need to think. And that's where this print comes in. You can print your own custom ones with the settings you want. This guy even uploaded the fusion file with parameters, so you can actually enter your parameters and change the settings to whatever you want. Now the best thing is, of course, to just learn to use the machine the correct way, and you don't need this. But it's such an easy print and you can just have a bunch of them with different settings in the sustainer and use them whenever you want. Now whilst we're on the Festool Domino, these are dry fit dominoes. How many times have you not just wasted dominoes for a dry fit and you have to almost break them to get them out and you just end up throwing them away? Well, this is the perfect download. All the sizes exist, just print a bunch of them, color code them and have them ready for your next project. I've placed the ones I've printed in my domino sustainer so they're all accessible from there. Now one of my recent favorites, if you have one of these, you know there are thieves out there keen on stealing your gear. Well, what if the thief didn't know that embedded in your sustainer was an air tag? Well, with this tiny print, you can hide one inside of your sustainer and if they end up stealing it, you can locate it and confront them. Maybe don't confront them, but call the police and tell them you have a tracker on your stolen item. It prints quickly, use a light grey similar to the Festool one if you want it as hidden as possible. Also, I've designed this to be quite hard to get out deliberately, because if it's easy getting it out, it might even fall out, or the thief might notice it's got some slack. So I've made a special tool to kind of grab it and get it out of there, so you can swap out the batteries when needed. Why not print a micro square? It's quick and dirty and for the most part serves its purpose just fine and it looks to be perfectly 90, which is good enough for my projects. You know how you almost always leave a cable in your shop vac because if you have a bunch of Festool gear you use the same cable. Well these small clips are perfect to just attach them to the shop vac hose and you can just leave one attached at all times. No need to swap them out for every tool. I used to sell these over on Etsy and I actually sold quite a few of these. A very quick print and if you want to go down the rabbit hole of finding the correct RAL code, it's available online and there are filaments in the exact colors. 
By the way, I've linked all the 3D prints down below, so don't worry, you can actually start your printer right after this video. I have this Sjöberg's workbench. I love it and it's not just because I'm a Swede, but because it's great. It came with four bench dogs, but sometimes you need more, so I printed them. Why not? Perfect fit, no need to design anything, it's all available for download. When I really want to lock this down, I try putting something soft in between the clamps and my workpiece because these small dots that are for gripping can dent the wood. And you don't want to sand that off later, especially not a round object like this. I have misshaped many round objects in my days. After rounding over some edges and sanding, and sanding some more and gluing up the legs, I didn't really have a plan for the glue up of these legs, but I bet some custom 3D prints could have helped me out a lot. I just didn't plan ahead. The build was almost done, but I wanted a way of attaching the legs to the top. And I recently bought myself a really good set of dowel cutting bits. And boy do I love this set. I mean, screws might not be the fanciest way of woodworking, but I was amused by the idea of what the underside would look like with the dowels. So I took the easy route and attached the legs to the top with screws and glued in dowels that I could cut with another great investment of mine, this small Japanese dowel saw. And after some Rubio Monocoat Pure, which I think works the best with walnut, just remember to not put oil on the parts you want to glue together. I added dowels and some finish to the bottom. Now, if you have a shop vac, one of the annoying things is that you need to get into small gaps and crevices when cleaning the workshop. And this one, it's just an attachment for it. Super easy, quick print, works good. Clean all those places you never really get to otherwise. I just store mine inside the shop vac when I don't use it, so I know where it is at all times. I've upgraded my sandpaper storage for storage rolls. This one is now easier to use because it has a lip at the bottom so it's easier grabbing the paper. Print the base and the two caps, put the paper in and add an old saw blade and you're good to go. For anyone who already got this from my website, it's just updated now so you can download the updated version for free. This is a thin rip jig. Cutting thin rips at the table saw can be a hassle, but with this jig it's safer and easier. It's a print with several parts and you also need some 608 ball bearings. Attach everything together, set the slider to the desired thickness, have it set before the blade, then start cutting your thin strips. So much better than anything else I used. Sometimes I deem my utility blades too bad to keep in my favorite knife. But lately I've been reusing them in 3D printed knives and I can just place them all over the workshop. They can still cut tape and stuff and they get a second life in a 3D printed shape. And there are plenty of files to print but for all of them I think it's important to remember that they are 3D printed, use them with caution. And dude that was only 14 prints, the title said 15. For those hot summer days in the workshop, print a fan attachment for your drill. I wouldn't say it's great, but maybe it can help clean some dust off your table saw. I have an idea. I want to try to do an entire project using the 3D printer. That might be a future video. 